in the Google world, you have surfacing schema. A set of questions to start to open the file folders that exist within your brain so that we can use those as anchors for the new knowledge that we're presenting. Different parts of our brain store different parts of our memory, different pieces of information. So we want to try to connect with multiple areas so we can start growing dendrites and closing synapses and making a path to the file folder that will contain this information. So giving you a picture that hopefully starts a little bit of openings. So the first question asks you to just make observations. Then we start opening other folders of memories what emotions come up, opens a third folder. Okay, so let's look at how we, um, what kind of ideas came up here. So we were looking at this picture and observations are just strictly like, what do you see, taste, smell? Of course, we weren't doing any of those except for seeing. Um, like an object, I'm looking at a, as skin, eroding, discolored, um, major infection, lots of swelling, multiple areas with colors, yeah. Scaly, splotchy pattern, red, purple, that's good. Oh, you guys are doing much better at just giving observations than many people have in the past. Let's see, there's tearing of the skin, um, Dr. Phil. So this group seems to connect a lot of bruise is what it reminds them of, um, a couple people identified um, maybe burns, <clears throat> makes you feel uneasy. Okay, that's usually the one that I see. Scared, nauseous. Mm -hmm. um, you feel sad, you hope they recover. Oh my gosh, you guys are way better than this than my previous years have been. Um, so that's awesome because you're like, each of those emotions is making connections in your brain, yeah. You could kind of empathize with the person. Um, so it, it um, makes you feel for them or it makes you almost feel their pain. So this is a necrotic bacteria, a necrotizing bacteria that, so that's flesh eating bacteria. So it does, um, it does look like a burn, but this is a bacterial infection that is eating away at the skin. So, um, our chapter is the immune system and the skin is our first line of defense. The skin is our first line of defense against infections and event against microorganisms. So we want to keep an intact skin. And that's one of the reasons why I used this as our connecting or anchoring picture or phenomenon. Um, because it lets us talk about that first line of defense. So we're gonna talk about the introduction to um, the immune system, which is mostly the lymphatic system. In our textbook, like if you have a hard copy, hard copy of the textbook, this is 352 to 356. So when you're doing your outline, if you just wanna take information from our lecture, I think you'll probably be able to fill it in on the first page, we can shortcut it. Um, later, this is a hard chapter because it's all, chemical or cellular. So it's not easily observable. So I do want you to come in Monday with prior knowledge of Monday's topic. So um, we're gonna con continue with this outline that I put in the Google Classroom for you. And this time, I don't want you to take a shortcut. I want you to actually read it and get the big picture so that Monday you have something to anchor um, the new knowledge to, okay? So we should have about 20 minutes at the end of the hour um, to go um, and work on that. So here we go, the lymphatic system. The, all of this green is our lymph vessels. And then these 
darker circles, these are lymph nodes. So from this graphic, you can see lymph nodes are really um, accumulated there in the groin, in the armpit, in the neck, and in the knees, we have a few even. These are the lymph nodes. If you were to look, make a, um, a section of them, you would see um, that there's incoming lymph, which will maybe be carrying bacteria. And then they come in contact with um, B cells and T cells, lymphocytes, and other macrophages. Macrophages are white blood cells that eat up foreign substances. So in the lymph node, um, you'll usually have an accumulation of bacteria from an infection. The doctor will often like palpate when you go into the doctor's office, right? You, they, he kind of feels your neck. So he's seeing if if there is any swollenness in those lymph nodes, and that would be an of an initial way of diagnosing that there's a possible infection. So we're gonna talk about the different structures of the lymphatic system. We have the thymus gland, the spleen, Peyer's patches, large intestine has the appendix attached to it and the functions of the lymphatic system. So this is showing you, we have capillaries here, right? We have arteries, we have veins. And then the yellow portion is all your lymph vessels. So we can see that the lymph vessels are really entwined um, with our blood vessels. So we know about osmosis. We know fluid moves from one compartment to another, right? So that means that um, water or fluid can move between the bloodstream the extracellular fluid, we call that interstitial fluid, the like all of our tissues are bathed in fluids and the lymph vessels. So it works closely with the circulatory system and the immune system. The immune system involves B cells and T cells. Circulatory system we know is the blood and white blood, other white blood cells. So it transports these disease fighting white blood cells, whether they're eosinophils or monocytes or neutrophils um, throughout the body. So it gives kind of a path for those organisms or these cells to travel. And it cleans the tissues of bacteria, toxins, foreign substances, proteins that don't belong, for example. It also returns leaked plasma to the bloodstream. So our vessels become leaky. That is all part of osmosis, right? Moving things from a high to a low concentration. If the vessels are expanded, if they're dilated, the pores become larger and it's easy for fluid to escape. You see that when you have swelling. So how does that fluid make its way back into the bloodstream? It moves through um, the lymph system in order to be returned to the blood. So these are our major organs, the lymph nodes, which we already talked about in the neck, in the armpits, the groin, those are big ones. Um, you have the, lymph, the thymus gland right here. It sits underneath the, the larynx, the voice box, and above your, like above the clavicles, kind of in that hollow above your heart. The spleen is on your left side um, above your stomach and it um, kind of folds over the front of you. And then the tonsils, which you might be familiar with, some of you have had to have your tonsils removed and the Peyer's patches, which are in the large intestine. So lymph literally means clear water. So. A lot of our science words come from Greek and Latin. I believe this is a Latin term and lymph is clear water. And if you were to look at lymph, it would remind you of a transparent fluid. Okay, so this comes from the fluid that is bathing the tissue cells, the interstitial fluid. It's making its way back into the bloodstream. It's very similar to plasma, the liquid portion of blood. High concentration of white blood cells, keeping your body clean of foreign bodies. So it drains the fluid from the lymphatic system into the bloodstream. So those are some of the things that it does. 
These are your lymph vessels. This time they appear green. We can see all of the intertwinedness. Um, these are tissue cells. So in between the tissue cells is fluid. Um, so we're going to move fluid between compartments, between the interstitial space into the lymph and then back into the bloodstream. So we can see how closely related they are. You have two lymphatic ducts. Ducts are like connecting tubes. So we have the ones on the right side here, the right collecting duct is kind of the upper portion of your body and the right side, your head, your chest and your right arm. So fluid from these areas will be returned to the bloodstream through the right lymphatic duct. And then the, the left side and the rest of your body is going in to the bloodstream via the thoracic duct, this tube here. So thoracic, we can picture these are ribs, right? So we're in the rib cage. Here's an example of the lymph nodes that are found in your neck that your doctor feels to see like if it's swollen, you might have an infection. You can usually feel a little bit of tenderness when they're filled, right? So when you have an infection, the bacteria will accumulate there. The white blood cells bring them to that area. Bacteria and tumor cells will gather here. Um, the lymph system brings it to that area, kind of to bathe the, the lymph and filter the lymph. Has macrophages. If you remember, we talked about white blood cells. The monocytes become macrophages, which means big eater. We talked about them having an insatiable appetite. So they get out and they engulf all foreign substances. They're in undifferentiated. It doesn't matter if it's COVID, E. coli, Ebola, the flu. They're going to eat them up. Um, so in the lymph nodes, you have lymphocytes, the B cells and the T cells that are very specific. So they will recognize um, the foreign body and then mount an army of an attack, or they will become specified to recognize it in the future if it's not one you've seen before. So our, our organs, the spleen right here, it is basically a filter um, of the bloodstream and the lymph and um, traps bacteria, viruses, other debris like um, proteins. Um, also remember we talked about the red blood cells living about 120 days and then they are broken down in the, in the spleen and the liver. So um, it plays a role in that. The thymus that up here, when you do your pig dissection, it kind of looks like a party hat on the heart. Um, the thymus gland produces hormones that differentiate mature T cells. So your T cells, like all, our, all of our blood cells are made in the bone marrow, but where they gain their specificity, their efficiency, their ability to do work is in the thymus gland. So the hormones um, secreted will allow that to happen. Here you can see some tonsils. So this is malt in general. This is like a category. Mucosa, the mucous membranes associated, that's where they're found, lymphatic tissue. So you have the tonsils and the Peyer's patches. The tonsils in the throat, um, you can see this child has some swollen tonsils. If they get too big or just continually get infected, um, they are often removed. Less often now than they used to be when I was a child, everybody had their tonsils out. Um, but now they know that they trap and remove bacteria. And so they're kind of important in trying to protect you against respiratory infections. So in your mouth, um, like whether you're breathing through your nose or your mouth, this is gonna be like the first area that comes into contact with foreign bodies. Pathogens are disease causing organisms. So again, this is the large intestine and the microvillae, right? These finger-like projections, they're gonna move things through the large intestine. And you know, our food has all kinds of bacteria in it likely, right? Especially if the food is not properly cooked. So, we need to protect ourselves from digestive um, bacteria. 
or foreign substances. So the pyrus patches are in the walls of the intestine, and this is kind of like a barrier um, so that whatever organisms might be in the substances that travel through our intestines, they don't travel into the bloodstream, right? That's how our intestines um, provide us with the nutrients, right? There, it's going to be like your your amino acids and your sugars and your fatty acids are all absorbed through the walls of the intestines and into the bloodstream and then delivered to your body. So this is like a barrier before you get to the bloodstream. So that's the lymphatic system, which is part of your nonspecific defenses. Nonspecific, they will attack all organisms the same. They try to act as a barrier to keep organisms out of your body in the first place or to keep them from becoming established in your body, okay? So all of those that we just talked about are um, part of non-specific, except the lymphocytes are specific. So things like your skin, your mucous membranes, inflammatory response, and um, different types of proteins that you're gonna read about when I'm done talking and as you're filling out that outline. The T cells and B cells that we mentioned, the lymphocytes, they're part of your specific defenses. So they will attack organisms differently depending on the organism. So they're going to affect um, E. coli in one way, botulism in another way. Uh, e. coli, I did. COVID in a third way. So they're very specific depending on the organism, right? So B cells and T cells are specific. They're both lymphocytes. Macrophages are more nonspecific. They just eat up anything and everything that doesn't belong. Your B cells produce antibodies, and this is the specificity of the immune system. So different antibodies match the receptor proteins on different organisms. So those are markers that are kind of like name tags and they have different shapes. And so when your B cells and T cells become specific, they will create shapes that match those markers. So we will get into those details next week. Today, the lymph, the lymph system. Monday, we'll get into that non-specific component, and then we'll break down the specific components afterwards. So hopefully you can list those structures, the pyrus patches, the tonsils, the lymph, the thymus, the spleen, the lymph nodes and vessels, and the function, which is returning fluid to the bloodstream as well as filtering um, the fluid of foreign substances. Okay. What questions do you have?